Australia is a land of striking beauty and diversity. From its cities to its lush forests to its arid outback, the world's smallest continent leaves travelers spellbound. Australia also has an amazing and often harsh history. The first settlers, called Aborigines by Europeans, arrived thousands of years ago, probably from Southeast Asia. Then in 1770, the explorer Captain James Cook claimed Australia for Britain. European settlers began to arrive and the Aborigine population suffered disastrously. Surprisingly, most of the first European settlers did not come to Australia voluntarily. They were forced to migrate. They were convicts who had been sentenced to deportation. For years, British courts had sent convicts to the American colonies, but that destination had been eliminated by the American Revolution and American independence. As a result, British jails began to overflow with prisoners. Many were dangerous criminals who had committed serious offenses. But many others were poor people from Britain's growing cities, whose only crime was that they were unable to pay their debts and others were political prisoners. Often they were Irish who had taken action against British rule. To solve the problem of prison overcrowding, British officials developed a daring scheme. They would turn Australia into a penal colony for convicts. The first ships arrived in Australia in 1788. More than 150,000 convicts were eventually transported to the continent. Australian officials used convict labor to clear the land. They planted crops and established herds of sheep and other livestock. The government also forced prisoners to work on public projects, such as the construction of government buildings and roads. Convicts were dispersed throughout the colony to provide free labor to settlers. While the convicts spent their days making Australia comfortable for others, they themselves lived under extremely harsh conditions. When they weren't working, they were constantly watched by guards. Their small and windowless cells exposed the prisoners to heat and cold. The convicts were forced to wear heavy chains on their legs that prevented them from escaping. After they finished serving their sentence, they could enter society as free citizens. But for some, the wait for freedom was too long. Escape was difficult, but not impossible. Convicts were able to break their chains with the tools they used for work projects. After freeing themselves, they ran into the wilderness, hoping never to be found. As a result of social reforms, the last convict ship arrived in Australia in 1849. British officials attracted free citizens to immigrate to Australia by giving them free land. The new settlers felt superior to the Aborigines that they were pushing off the land, they also looked down on the convicts and former convicts who came before them. It was very important to people to be, the people who weren't convicts, to make sure that everybody knew they weren't convicts. They didn't want to be, you know, mistaken for one of them. As more settlers arrived and as convicts continued to finish their terms, Australians were creating a national identity for themselves. They didn't want to be a colony of the British Empire. They wanted to have a government of their own. In 1901, Britain helped the colony become the independent Commonwealth of Australia. Its democratic government was based on a constitution that drew on both the American and British models. Australia kept its ties to Britain by recognizing the British monarch as its head of state. Today, Australians look back at their past with both pride and curiosity. The days of the penal colony are gone forever. But Australians remember the men and women who were forced to migrate to Australia on prison ships, who cleared the land and built the cities. They and their descendants remain an enduring part of every Australian's heritage.